Hello and thank you for watching my video. This is another in the series looking at PvP builds for Guild Wars 2 in 2015. Now as you can see here this is actually during the Stronghold beta that I'm recording this video but I've actually been playing this uh, this build for a while now and this is the DPS Guardian build. It's a slight variant on some of the other ones that you might have seen out there. Um, in particular there's a very good one that I'd recommend uh, as an alternate DPS Guardian and that's involved uh, a, a good video done by Jebro. There'll be a link in the description that you can go and check that out uh, because I run sword focus now on his build he actually runs a uh, sort of a scepter focus uh, and then also we both run the same and we run hammer so there's a couple of different variations you can go for uh, i will tell you this it's very very uh, quite very very powerful but also very very squishy indeed compared to my previous bunker guardian build i'm used to being able to survive a lot and in this one we do really really struggle quite a lot so let's go through the build as you can see here, we have the sword and the focus. We have a Siege of Force to give that extra fat, flat 5% damage. A 50% chance on critical, so this is with the focus, particularly using uh, Shield of Wrath. Uh, you get that 50% uh, chance on critical to trigger a flame bar, uh, blast in the area for a, you know, a good area of effect damage. For the hammer, we actually have again Siege of Force, the flat 5% damage, and this time we have a chance on critical for cause of lightning strike. Again, both of these, you know, the Sigil of Air, Sigil of Fire, they can be mixed up. You can try a few different variants. Uh, this is just, you know, we want that extra 5% flat damage. Uh, we actually run Rune of the Eagle, Precision Ferocity, and it really does more damage when you're taking out the <clears throat> those with less than 50% health. We also have the Berserker Amulet, so pretty standard there. We're going Power, Precision, and Ferocity. So let's look at the traits. We have one in the zeal column, so we go 16610, and the reason we do this is when we're struck below 50%, we actually get a uh, symbol of wrath, and this actually gives us retaliation and causes damage to an enemy. We get uh, in the radiance track line, we have when activating virtue of justice, nearby foes are blinded, so this would be this one here, that's a good way to inflict blindness on opponents. But inflicting blindness also applies vulnerability. So that's another good uh, trait to take along with you, blind exposure. Is there anything else that you want to take along? Well, not particularly. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps Shimmering Defense, but you cause enough burning with Virtue of Justice anyway. And uh, Searing Flames is quite a good one to remove boons. You know, when you apply burning to a foe, you do remove boons. So again, there is some variation, but because we're going, we have uh, with the with the flashing blade, we can cause blind uh, cause blindness. We inflict a lot more vulnerability. The virtue of justice is renewed when you kill a foe. So obviously, we get that back if we uh, eliminate an enemy. Uh, sword damage is increased by 10%, so you can see here the modifier of the damage there, because it's gone up a hell of a lot. Uh, we do more damage to foes inflicted with conditions, again, another flat 10%, so if they are suffering from conditions, we get that extra damage. And critical hit chance with one-handed weapons is increased. So for the sword here, particularly, you can see there, the critical chance increased 15%. So we are really doing a lot of crit. Oh, the critical chance is really, really high. Uh, I think if we, you can see here the critical damage. We've got the quite high critical damage, critical chance over fifty percent. So we do. We've got a good chance to crit and then cause a lot of critical damage. I'll oh, just quickly talk about the honor track. Uh, we get vigor when we deliver that critical hit. So that's helpful for dodging around and you know able to give that bit of extra survivability. So let's talk about valor. Uh, so this is toughness and ferocity. We get Aegis when we're struck below 50%. So remember we actually get Symbol of Wrath and we get Aegis. So uh, um, we get Vigor and we get Aegis. So we got quite a lot of good uh, different, well sorry, Vigor, Vigor, when, um, Vigor when you actually deliver, uh, actually deliver a critical hit. I do apologise for my voice. I really, I've got this sore throat still. So <coughs> excuse me if um, you, you're misunderstanding a lot of my words here. Uh, so when we're below 50%, we get that uh, symbol of wrath and we also get Aegis. We lose conditions at set time interval because we have a few different condition removal boon, uh, sort of traits and skills. So could we take anything else? Uh, you know, we could go with strength in numbers, uh, precision based on our toughness, retributive armor. But, uh, you know, uh, generally I find having a bit of condition removal is quite handy indeed. 
Virtue of Co Courage is recharged when you rally. So this, uh, the the one that gives you Aegis, that's recharged when you rally. So quite handy if you do rally uh, and you're still getting attacked, you'll get that to immediately block an attack. Meditations grant fury. So you can see here, these are all the, the contemplation of purity and judge's intervention. They give us that fury, which is an extra 20% critical chance. Uh, we get might when we block attacks. So the shield of wrath, very, very crucial indeed. Uh, and meditation skills heal us. So these two also, even though they, uh, you know, remove uh, conditions and also teleport to my foe, they'll be able to remove conditions as well and heal us. Sorry, they don't remove conditions. They will just remove, uh, just heal us and give us fury. So they are the traits that we take along in this. Uh, and I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a bit of footage here. So what we're going to do, we've got a couple of different ways that we can use this. Uh, one we'll look at here, we'll go... We've got Flashing Blade. Now, this is the teleport skill. So you can see it. we're just out of range because of the red bar there. So we can move it a bit closer. Now we're in range. So what we'll do, we'll teleport in and then use skill 3 and we'll really cause a lot of damage. So here we go. And boom. I'm only clicking to show you as well. This is against a heavy target. So you see the vulnerability that we've inflicted there. We'll pop Aegis because I want to show you that when we kill... Oh, it doesn't really work. Sorry. Um, I th though it was uh, Virtue of Justice, wasn't it? So Virtue of Justice, so let's do this uh, on the medium one. So we teleport in and Flashing Blade, uh, oh, so there we go, Flashing Blade. So you see the uh, vulnerability, we'll pop our Virtue of Justice and uh, it's not really, I don't think it's working in this sort of environment, but we do get that the Virtue of Justice is supposed to recharge. So these are the uh, different options that we have and the ability and I'll show some combat off going on now. But I wanted to show you the abilities that we actually have in uh, the you know sort of the PvP arena, um, why do we take hammer? Well, hammer is very very useful indeed. So let's go over to fight some more golems. If we look at the skills that we get here. We actually have symbol of protection. So doing a few smashes uh, does able to heal us and uh, you know give us protection. We do have mighty blow. That's when you jump up and smash down like that. Uh, Zealot's embrace very very useful for um, preventing enemies escaping. So using that one here, you'll see here. We'll fire out the chain so that it causes immobilize we've got this launch banish is a terrific launch the most powerful launch in the game 750 launch boom there you go watch him go all the way over there <laughs> so you see that there that's pretty handy they will let this smash again um we've got this ring of warding very very useful for uh sort of entrapping foes if you really want to keep them in a particular close proximity use that or if you want to keep foes out it's very very useful indeed so let's talk about our other skills we have shelter so that obviously gives us uh, aegis while we're healing so it stops us being attacked we've got uh judge's intervention so what we can see here we whoop you know teleport in and you know we'll carry on doing some damage so that really does allow us you know to move around the map fairly quickly if you are suffering from condition using purging flames is quite handy because it eliminates uh, conditions and reduces their duration by 33%. Uh, if you are suffering from conditions, using uh, contemplation of purity is another way to get rid of all your conditions. You see, all the conditions we're suffering become our boons. So pretty, pretty handy indeed. Uh, is there anything else that we'd prefer to take? Well, uh, as you can see, we're traded again for the uh, meditations. I have got that purging flames just because, even though it's a consecration, uh, just because it gives us that extra ability, uh, ability to remove uh, conditions. But because obviously we've got the meditations, if you look at the other meditations there are, you do have merciful intervention, so that's uh, to do with obviously healing. Very, very useful in the beta, looking at stronghold. And we'll, uh, the other uh, meditation, uh, we have, I think it's just a three. Oh no, it's a uh, smite condition. So we could go with smite condition, but it cures a condition and damages nearby foes. But that's only one condition. Uh, purging flames are light because it does cure conditions on allies as well. So if you are wanting the full uh, meditation sort of uh, combo, I would take smite condition. But again, if you're wanting that extra support bit, uh, support role, Purging Flame is very useful because it removes condition, or condition and uh, also reduces the condition duration if you get it applied to you again. So very, very uh, important indeed. Uh, one thing we haven't really looked at is the focus skills. Using Shield of Wrath is very, very important because when Shield of Wrath explodes, I uh, didn't quite manage it there, uh, it does cause a lot of damage. 
We also have Ray of Judgment. So again, we're looking at these blinding skills. So if we look here, what does it blind do? It gives it invulnerability, uh, vulnerability as well. So pretty handy. Uh, you know, we really inflict a lot of vulnerability here. Uh, I'm, we're just going to let this auto, att auto attack, even though it's indestructible. Um, actually, let me move away. Um, but the Shield of Wrath really does a lot of damage. Uh, you know, if you've got a lot of might stacks um, on you, then it will really do a lot of damage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you guys watch a bit of me in the Stronghold beta, and I will show you uh, me in action. If we just show you here, this is the Shield of Wrath. So we go in. This is what I normally do. Skill 5, skill 2, skill 3, and you can see there the damage that we've inflicted. Um, if I roll out the way, so there we go. Um, let's have a look at our combat. So if we look at all these, these you know, we're hitting for Zealot's Defense. Uh, I want to see, what was it? We had Shield of Wrath. So Sword of Wrath. We, is there a... I think I might have gone past it. I wanted to show you the actual how much we're actually hitting for it. So let's load up the combat. I'll do this one last time. So what we're going to do, we're going to do Shield of Wrath. We're going to do Flashing Blade and Zealot's Defense. Uh, just to basically really go in and hammer it home. Might use skill 4 as well and then go just attack, attack, attack. So here we go. We've uh, got our shield. Uh, so we're going to do 5, 2, 3, 4, 1. 5, 2, 3, 4, 1. See all those critical hits. Uh, we've got Shield of Wrath to hit for almost 2,000 damage there. And, you know, there we go. We're really cleaving him down or blind him again. And this is very, very useful against melee characters. Obviously, you know, warriors and um, sort of uh, thieves. Causing a lot of blinds is really one way to prevent yourself from getting a lot of damage. Uh, we are pretty, as I said, pretty uh, squishy using this build. So be aware to try and use these blocks you can take. Again, you know, we've got this difference. You can go in, you can use the hammer to really sort of uh, immobilize and finish them off. Uh, you know, if you're running after somebody, you know, you want to use skill 3 um, to sort of immobilize them, go around them, and use skill 5. Very, very good CC weapon, the Guardian Hammer. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration of the Guardian DPS build that I run here. If you've uh, any further comments, I am always uh, appreciative of feedback. I know for one, look, I, I, I do PvP a lot, but I'm not the master of PvP at all. Uh, I've just found build that I quite enjoy and works well for me. If you've got any suggestions, any modifications you do, would there be any different traits that you do? Uh, you know, do you think this is slightly uh, incorrect? Uh, would there be any different skills that you take? By all means, please leave me some comments. I'm always up for constructive criticism. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.
bringing the fire. 